first off, I wanted to welcome everybody to our virtual holiday networking party. It's my guess, my best guess, that this is our seventh annual version of this, raising money for Toys for Tots, just because the graphic I used last year said sixth annual, so it's got to be seventh this year. Process of elimination. Um, and this is, the whole event is to raise money for Toys for Tots. So if you are joining us and have not yet donated, I'm going to ask everybody to jump over to mary.org slash toys and make a quick donation of whatever <laughs> you can afford. Um, if I can pull my screen up here, I'm going to do a quick look. We are actually, we have $4,387 on the actual live <laughs> If I go over there. So we have done this mostly through all of you. Uh, I see a lot of faces there that I know your names are on the donation. Um, but we do ask if we were at the regular meeting, I have a, a bevy of people. Kim has helped us in the past. And those are my shakedown artists. They don't let you in the room unless you have a toy or 20 bucks. So um, I don't have anybody shaking you down. This is all in the honor system. So if you get a chance, jump over there and make a donation. Um, I'm going to run through um, just kind of a little review of what happened over the last year, what we've seen, and just do a quick review so we, we get some announcements and that gives everybody a chance to make their donations. So the review of 2020, it was a very bizarre year, very bizarre. We started with our January meeting and these were our normal staff checking folks in. Um, we had Bobby and Jake and Holly and then Brett ran our sound. And we just have some photos of the meetings over January. Um, and everybody was super pumped because it was January. We we're all ready to get started on a brand new year, brand new way of investing. We had a national speaker that a lot of people were really excited to see. And so January, it, we were packed. Um, and we missed seeing a lot of you folks. There's that lovely green shirt from Rachel, we always cite. And then we got to February. And in February, we had a special announcements from Julie Anderson to give us our new tenants bill of rights that passed in January. And we talked about bad things in our houses with Titan Environmental. Little did we know what was gonna happen at the next month's meeting. Because by the time we made it to the March meeting, I was calling around 10 minutes before the meeting asking somebody, anybody, if they had um, hand sanitizer. There wasn't any, so we found some hand sanitizer to make it to the March meeting. But it was still a good meeting, still had a lot of bright faces. And then it really started heating up. We all got to learn how to use Zoom. I don't know if anybody remembers back to the Mary meeting in, um, in March, we had a national speaker and he was in town for the week. We had a boot camp or a, a, a live Saturday workshop all planned for Saturday. And as we're watching, my, my, uh, my rule was if they canceled basketball, then we had to cancel our event. And when they canceled basketball, I called up my speaker and sent him home. And then he's like, oh, we'll be back next month. We'll do it next month. And it took us a couple months before we made it to getting him on Zoom and getting everybody on Zoom. And then for the next two or three months, we had meetings all over the city with this lovely lady. Julie was all over at every RIA group and every landlord group telling us what all the rules and regulations coming out meant. So if you are having questions on landlord tenant law, I would jump over to Julie's website. I'll get you that here in a minute. But I do have some thanks I want to put out. I have a few people. I'm not sure if they've logged on or if they're going to be able to join us tonight. But if it weren't for these four people, we might not have had any merry meetings since March. Brett has been very gracious on a lot of events, logging on and helping us make sure that we uh, are muted where we're supposed to be. And he's given us some tips. Uh, Kyle has helped us figure out how to do a few more things on Zoom. And he's got me some ideas for next year. And Holly's been busy doing the back end stuff, making sure everybody's checked in. And, and Julie has been giving of her time as an attorney. I don't know what she charges per hour, but I do know that she has been doing a lot of free training and 
help for all of landlord groups and the real estate investor groups out there. So if you see any of these people online or in person, give them a big thanks because they've helped make sure that Mary kept going or we'll give them a toast. It is a holiday party, so we'll give them a toast. And I really want to thank our vendors. I don't know if you've seen most of our Mary meetings, but all of these people have been at almost every meeting online, plus a lot of the others. I think Susan's been to quite a few of them there. She's here today. I just didn't have pictures of everybody in the right place. So Susan's been at a lot of them. Jenny's been at a lot of them. Um, Mark has been at all of them, except for when he was on vacation. Jerry missed the first one, and then we got him to figure out how to get on Zoom, and he joined us. And um, Rick Davis is another attorney that's been giving of his time. He's been at answering a lot of questions on our behalf as well. Um, and uh, Jim White has been in, in at all the meetings uh, and as has Candy Meehan. And she's been putting in a lot of time in the back end side. We've been doing a lot of advocacy. We've been trying to figure out what we do with the eviction moratoriums and everything. And she's been putting in a lot of time um, helping represent the, the Kansas side as well as the Missouri side as a property manager and a landlord. And this is one person I want everybody out there to make sure you know who she is. I'm Stacy Johnson Cosby. She's a, a realtor. She's a landlord. She ran for city council last year, the year before, um, but she has been advocating on behalf of our industry for a long time. And she's been working nonstop this last year, making sure that our voice is heard locally as well as nationally. And she's got this one uh, trait that drives me crazy. She will not take no for an answer. So she can <laughs> working at it until we get it done. So I suggested we should have a career fair, never meaning to actually have one. And she's like, okay, we're gonna do it next Thursday. Let's go for it. Let's, let's do a career fair. And I believe we had um, 25, 30 vendors with 500 jobs and, and three or 4,000 people watch that, that Zoom event. And then I also suggested we do a, have United Way join us to talk about all of the, uh, the resources to pay utility bills and rent and mortgages. And I, I didn't know how to get it done. She just put it together and says, okay, we're doing it next Thursday. And that was uh, the most attended. We posted the, the video of the whole event on the Mary Facebook page. And that was the most visited page this year. So I would like everybody to make sure you thank Stacy Johnson Cosby if you run into her anywhere or see her on Facebook, look her up and give her a big kudos and thank you. All right, so here's a look forward. You wanna see what's going on next year? This is really weird talking to a computer screen. So <laughs> you got to give me a thumbs up or a wave every once in a while. So I know you're hearing me, but we want to look forward a little bit to 2021. We're hoping we get off soon sometime, um, but we will be virtual just for planning purposes. Um, I can tell you we'll be virtual through April because it's really hard to book a speaker when I don't know where the meeting is going to be. Yeah. But if I say they're all online until April, I can book speakers. But if I'm guessing, I, it's hard to get really good speakers, especially at the first of the year, if you don't know where your meetings are. So we're saying virtual through April and we'll figure it out from there. But what do we got coming up? I don't know if you've ever ran into this guy, Kevin Shortell. I was at our um, monthly meeting, our monthly meeting, our Friday meeting last week. And somebody said, oh, I just went to a seminar with him three days ago. Well, he is in the note industry. He's been a landlord. He's done a lot of things in the real estate industry. Um, but he is a numbers guy looking at, you know, putting together the market, the state of the industry. And he's done it for a lot of national speakers over the years. Um, but lately, he's been coming out and putting together his own predictions. So he is joining us for a special session. I think we have January 9th to take a look at what's going on in the real estate industry for 2021 and where we might want to put our focus. I'm guessing he's going to tell us as investors, we, we might want to learn more about note investing. We might want to learn more about short sales. Um, we've got a short sale expert on here somewhere. David might agree with us. So we need to learn more about short sales in 2021. I'm also going to guess that we might want to learn a little bit more about creative financing. And so he is um, then following up with the Mary meeting real estate without renters. And it's basically how to get your cash flow out of notes instead of rentals and instead of renters. So, and he's going to do a short note workshop as well. 
uh, coming in February. Um, you might all remember Sean McCloskey. He was here, I don't know, three or four years ago. And he did a, him and a few friends did a three-day workshop on how to build a business and a life all together so that you can live your life. So you're getting the benefits of your business, but not working yourself to death. And so he's got a new focus. He's no longer a life and air, which was the brand name he was teaching under at the time. He is teaching out on his own. So he is going to come in and do a business building. He's going to talk about that at the meeting. And then he has a three-day workshop that Cross Your Fingers is supposed to be live and in person in St. Louis. That may be virtual and that will be in March. Um, and we are also talking to a few people to see if we can have a class and a workshop on short sales, a class and a workshop on wholesaling. And I'm still trying to decide if apartment investing is something we need to learn or if, if that might be just too scary for 2021, but we'll see. But those are some of the topics that I'm working on for the next year so you know what's coming up. All right. I've lost my mouse. Where did it go? There we go. So everybody ready to network? You got your, your, your what is it, elevator pitch? So my time limit, I have in my, in my little timer, my little timer here, which I just unplugged, I have it set at 90 seconds. I was going to try to figure out if I could go alphabetically down the list, which I think I can figure out how to do that. And so we're going to go alphabetically by first name. Um, I'm going to ask you, as you know, you're coming up to turn your camera on because we'd rather see your face than your picture or your logo or whatever Zoom has decided to put on the screen for you. And basically share who you are, what you have to offer or need, or whatever it is that you want to share, and how to get in touch with you. I would also strongly recommend after you're done to add it to the chat. So if everybody, can everybody find the chat? Most people know where that is, but sometimes Zoom hides it. So uh, you should, if you have a control bar, you either have a chat somewhere on the control bar, or if you hit the more button, you will find chat under the more. So if you wanted to give us your 90 second pitch, and then you could type it into the chat. Um, be, feel free, don't share my face. Um, feel free to share your messages um, with each other. So if you wanted to follow up in the chat and also if you want to save the chat before you leave in that chat box, there's a three dots. If you right click on that, right click, left click, right click. Got to get this right for you. Come on, three dots. All right, so you click the, save, the three dots and hit save chat and it'll save it somewhere on your computer. In my computer, if you go to my documents under a Zoom folder, that's where it saves the chat. But I will also be saving this and sharing it out with everybody that actually registered through our website. Anything else I need to know? Um, be sure to follow up with everybody tomorrow. So like I said, we're gonna start at the top of the list. So I believe it would be a line would be first. Where are you, Align? I'm here trying to figure out the uh, logistics on here. Hold on. Okay. All right, there we go. I think that works. All right, go for it. Hi, everyone. Good evening. So I guess I'll make it quick, as I'm sure there's a lot of people to get through. Um, I'm not sure who all is on the call. I've been on just a couple of these, and, and maybe some people in here know me, or we've connected somewhere else. I am a full-time wholesaler, both outside of Indianapolis and in KC now as well. I've been wholesaling in Indianapolis for about four and a half years, and I just got into the KC market about five months ago. I uh, have about, I think at this point, five deals under my belt, and am looking to continue growing out there. So that is the gist of it. On the personal note, I do buy and hold myself. Uh, my rental properties are here in Indy, and I'm looking to get into multifamily in 2021. So uh, do I have an ask right now or an offer? I guess offer is, again, I provide deals. So if anyone wants to touch base with me or get on my list, like Kim said, I'll go ahead and share my information here in a second. So I offer deals and properties. Um, I don't really have an ask, I guess. I, I would ask to, for anyone to get on my buyers list that's interested. I don't have a, a big ask other than that. Uh, maybe multifamily properties. Like I said, I'll be focusing on that for the coming year. If anyone has any multifamily opportunities, that would be awesome. 
Uh, other than that, that's about it. If anyone has any questions or is also struggling moving some deals, if there's beginning wholesalers here in the group that would like some assistance or to JV on anything, I'd be more than happy to take a look at stuff and potentially help if I can in any way. All right, time. That is that is my, my spiel. All right. Next up is Alan Gordon. Alan, can we find you? Alan Gordon. He, he's trying, yeah, he's yeah, here. <laughs> so Elaine, I will try to pick up your name because I and my spouse and the real master of the house, the screaming animal, <laughs> we are looking for properties to purchase uh, the, the lower half of the market at prices that investors like to buy them. Mm -hmm. It's been a challenge of late. So Elaine, maybe you can help us. Sounds good. Yeah, we love Kansas City. Uh, it's a nice community. We like the attitudes of the people. It's a beautiful state. We're even thinking. My wife is now thinking maybe we should buy a nicer house so we can move in, into. Yeah. Uh, one in Overland that's Park. on the way. Just have to talk it into. All right. Uh, Anything else to share? All right, well, we will so, move no, on. We will move on if you don't have anything else there, Alan. And our next person see it. is Andrew Mitchell. Hi, good evening to everybody. Uh, Andrew Mitchell here. Um, I'm in the financial services space with Moss Advisors. Um, I deal with a lot of people in the private family wealth space on the tax side and on the purchasing side of real estate. On the tax side, dealing with people that are just, that make a lot of money in real estate and they're trying to mitigate their tax bill. And so we work a lot on those strategies. Um, also, um, working with investors that want to buy commercial properties, multifamily unit, unit housing, and my investors, they don't have a limit um, on, on, on the value of the property. So if you have bigger properties, then it might be worth the conversation. And so whether it be, and also finally, whether it be liquidity issues, um, deal with a lot of real estate investors on how they create li liquidity in their corporate structures and how you balance taxes so that your net cash flow can be more. And so uh, I'll pa post my information in the, in the chat for everybody. Uh, so that's me, Andrew Mitchell with Moss Advisors. Okay. All right. So I've gotten through, I believe... I have one more person that starts with P, but the second part of the name is Abogay. So I'm going to assume since the P is the initial that Abogay is the first name. Yes, you're right. Um, first name is Abuaji Hinaku. Okay. And um, I'm actually a pharmacist and also into um, um, looking into mainly um, single family um, real estate investing and um, I've been in the Kansas City area for the past seven and a half years and I think it's a good area yeah all right and who is next Angel and Angel if you don't know I made you a co-host so you can help me mute people if you happen to see somebody making noise so, Angel, I know you're out there because you're at the top of my list. Hi, I'm Angel um, with Mastiff Home Buyers is my company. We offer um, alternative solutions to homeowners who are wanting to sell. Uh, we also purchase mobile homes and our niche is affordable housing. And I am the one of the uh, co-hosts for the multifamily group. So if you're interested in multifamily, we offer education and information to multifamily investors and are looking to hopefully uh, purchase a higher end deal um, soon, um, early in 2021. That is a great call. Yeah. All right. Anything else? And I will move on to our next person, which I believe is Betsy Teagarden. Betsy, are you out there? 
I am. Hello, everyone. I'm Betsy Teagarden, and I have an accounting firm called Accounting on It, and we help small businesses use their financial data as an insightful tool for business growth. So we provide bookkeeping, financial statement prep, and analysis, um, budgeting, forecasting, and right now our big ticket item is um, accounting file setups for 2021, so you can get organized for next year, or clean up work or catch up work if maybe you've let it fall behind for this year and um, you want to get things in order. I am also a real estate investor with single family homes in the area, and I am looking for either some hard money lenders or some private lenders who might be willing to help us finance our next deal. Cool. I remember meeting you last year. All right. Next up is Bob Coleman. And Bob, I have a question for you before we, we let you get started. Um, I understand that if they want to donate to Toys for Tots and they do it personally, mm -hmm. that they can donate up to $300 and, and have that as a tax deduction because of the CARES Act? That's correct. The CARES Act uh, waives the limit on uh, itemized deductions. Uh, which was 60%. If you're itemizing, you can deduct up to 60% of your income. Actually, this year it's up to 100%. But you're, if you're going to be taking the standard deduction, which is 12,400 for an uh, individual or 24,800 for a married couple, uh, you're allowed to take up to $300 of a deduction uh, of, to an organized activity or to a, a charitable activity. Um, there's also an unlimited limit on the amount of food contributions that you can make. Food inventory deductions are unlimited. So those okay. are features of the new CARES Act. Cool. All right. Well, thank you for being put on the spot. So if you guys have three, need a $300 tax deduction, you can donate that to Toys for Tots or even more if it's food to, uh, I would assume, harvesters and uh, get better tax deductions. But Bob, you're up next, so let's hear your, your pitch. Well, thank you. I'm Bob Coleman. I have a service called Coleman Accounting Service. I have a staff of a, a CPA and another QuickBooks expert. Uh, it's a home-based business. I've been around Mari for a number of years, and I have a lot of clients that are part of Mari. Uh, I'm an investor myself. I do a lot of real estate tax advice, a lot of personal business taxes, business taxes and personal taxes, and and payroll for the sole proprietors who need to establish some reasonable compensation. Uh, we, uh, we love meeting people. We have a free one hour consultation to anybody who's interested in, in just picking my brains. Uh, love to meet you all. And I know a lot of you already, but uh, I'm sure there's a few that don't know me yet. So uh, please get in touch with me. All right, and how do we do that, Bob? ColemanAccounting.com and accounting is abbreviated ACCTG. I'll post that on the chat there. And as a reminder, if you've already gone, be sure to put your, your ask and your, and your contact information in the chat. And next up, we have Bonita, Bonita Yoder. Oh, you're muted, Bonita. We can't hear you. <laughs> There we go. Try again. That's unusual to either be muted. Oh, shh. That's a, a usual to be at the beginning. I'm Yoder. I'm always at the end. My background is in law, and I'm a licensed real estate and a real estate broker in Kansas and Colorado, also a licensed attorney in both states. But I have if you, a property in Old West Lawrence, around 400,000, and one of those nice, great properties with wood floors listed, if you know of anybody wanting to move to Lawrence. Also, I have three properties on two lots, rental properties as a package near the hospital in Lawrence, and a house in East Lawrence that I would consider a lease option to purchase if you know someone interested in that. I'm looking for a part-time maintenance person in Lawrence, also a property manager in Lawrence. 
I know most of you are in the Kansas City metro area, but that's what I'm looking for. And speaking and entertainment gigs, I do that too <laughs> with puppets. They help me co MC. So I'll put some information in the chat. All right, cool. Thank you, Bonita. And I believe my last in my bees would be Bruce Belanger. Thank you, Kim, and good evening, everyone. My name is Bruce Belanger. I'm with Livingston Private Lending, and we're a Kansas City-based private lender, hard money lender. Um, we just work with Kansas City investors on Kansas City properties and really uh, pride ourselves to be easy to work with, um, keeping fees to a minimum, certainly competitive. Uh, we've got a lot of repeat customers that we really enjoy working with. So if you have a need for any hard, any hard money, any, any kind of uh, creative financing, by all means, reach out and contact me. And I also want to make you aware of a product that we introduced uh, just a few months ago. It's called Finish Line Funding. And we realize that there are a lot of conditions where material costs and labor shortages have driven up the cost to flip a house or to get one ready for rent. So we have developed a product that is designed to help you get across the finish line. So we want projects that are in good shape and will loan you know, relatively small amounts, kind of in the five to 25 um, range. Um, you can have an existing loan on the property already. Uh, so there are certain parameters that I can talk to you about. But if you're in the kind of situation where you need some additional funds just to get it ready to go, we might be able to help you out. So I'll put the information in the contact box and please reach out to me. Okay. And you will find um, Bob Coleman and Bruce both are on the Mary business page. If you go to mary.org and select, click on the business directory, you will find that they are both there. Okay, get it stuck. And my next person, thank you very much, Bruce. Um, our next person will be Christine New Peering, if I got the name right. Christine New Peering. Yes, that is correct. Thank All you. Right. Yeah, this is our first time being with the group. Now, we're actually members of TRIG, which is Tidewater Real Estate Investment Group, which is also a member of the network. And so today I was, uh, actually yesterday, I guess I talked with Kim and we had a good conversation, but uh, we are going to be moving to Colorado Springs to be with our daughter, but we have one property in Virginia where we are now. And we are looking to get homes, single family homes basically here in the Kansas City area. And so our information, our business information, I will put in the chat but we're looking for something that's pretty much ready to be rented. And what we have done is we have something at Virginia Tech and we work with a company there, a management company. So we're looking for somebody to help us manage at a distance. So if you can put us in contact with anybody that's involved in that and whatever kind of wisdom they can give us here locally for what the trends are, we'd be very, very appreciative. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for joining us. And you uh, are in town today. So if you want to sell her a house tomorrow, she is actually in Kansas City right now. So they can come. Look All this right. Thank we you. Are, thank you very much. We will move on. And I believe our next person that brings us to the D's and that would be Damien Jensen. Damien Jensen. All righty. Good evening, Kim, and all of Mary. <laughs> good, good to be back. I've missed the last few months. Uh, so for those I haven't met, uh, which is probably most of you, uh, I'm Damien Jensen. Uh, been a real estate investor for quite some time, but wasn't really uh, putting a lot of effort in. But uh, I've kind of turned that corner. I'm, I'm now full-time. Um, I do both wholesaling and pretty house uh, creative financing type deals. Um, so I, I guess for... Um, you know, for me, I've been involved in real estate for quite a number of years. Um, but what I'm doing here locally is, like I said, wholesaling and pretty house uh, deals. And I would say, I guess, as far as needs go, um, I'd be interested in talking to uh, some serious uh, buyers that are looking for either rehab properties or rentals. And then um, uh, anyone that would be interested in being a money partner on pretty house deals as a private lender to help close those uh, primary target there is free and clear houses. So you'd have first lien positions. 
so anyone that's interested in things like that, um, I'd love to chat with you and see if we can't come together and do some business. Excellent. And be sure to add your information to the chat so people can connect with you. And I'm trying to take notes so I don't miss. Uh, Dave Smith would be up next. So uh, Dave, where are you? Yep, I'm right next to you. All right, there we go. How you doing everybody? Um, I'm new to the group. Uh, returning real estate investor. I flipped houses back in the early 2000s and um, then started a electrical contracting business. I'm a master electrician by trade. Um, in and out of the nine to five over the years, I, I uh, recently left the nine to five and burned all the boats. Um, and I wanted to do this full time. So um, <clears throat> right now setting up systems and processes to build out uh, the wholesaling model, and I'm looking to help other wholesalers uh, share resources, build relationships, and team up to push through bottlenecks and create win-win transactions. Perfect. And we hear you. We you you share quite a bit on uh, you you and several of the people are at our Friday calls, so we can discuss stuff more in depth from time to time. So. Be sure if you remember to check out our Friday roundtable, we can solve a lot of problems with our group of 10 to 12. Okay, next up, David Roddick. Did I say that right, David? Hey, guys. Sorry about that. Um, yes, you said it right. Thank you. Um, so I am new to investing as well. Um, I just got my license and I'm starting to wholesale and help people uh, find investment properties. So if you are trying to either, you know, sell homes, buy homes, whether it's off market or off MLS, uh, give me a call. I'll put my phone number in the chat. All right. That wasn't your timer. That was somebody else's. So Thanks. I wasn't cutting you off. You still have a minute left. <laughs> um, I'm pretty simple right now. Um, so yeah, if you guys are looking to uh, partner on anything or just looking to buy or sell, just let me know. All right, cool. Yeah, and then next up I have Elias Cruz. Elias. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry about that. Um, this is actually my first time in a meeting. I'm sorry, I'm walking through the store right now. Hey, um, that's cool. My name is Elias Cruz. Um, I'm actually brand new to wholesaling. I'm trying to start up my business right now. So I'm really looking for kind of like a mentor. Um, someone who can help me get through the process of everything and make sure that I'm not missing a step. Um, I will drop my information in the chat just so someone, if they can, they can contact me. Um, that's about all I have, though. All right. Well, thank you and happy shopping. Now, a year ago, you couldn't have attended the Mary meeting and walked through a store at the same time. Who knew? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you guys again. Have a good night. You too. Next up. Evan, Evan Reeves. Hey, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh, sorry, I'm having issues with my camera. I can't get it up. Um, but I'm sort of new to uh, new to real estate investing. Um, I have an inherited uh, IRA that I uh, inherited from my grandparents a couple of years ago. Um, and I'm just looking to do some investing with that. So I'm not familiar. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar, Kim, or if anyone else is with uh, investing with uh, IRAs, but that's sort of the route I'm looking to go. Um, if you are a member, you can actually go back and grab the replay of last month's meeting. We had a great debate of the differences between a self-directed IRA and a self-directed 401k, and we had a lot of ideas too. So highly recommend checking. I think it was last month's meeting. So, Oh, great. I'll check that out. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, and next up, we have, um, I think, E. Edward. there's nobody in the F's, so I'm up to the G's, and that will bring us to Greg Calloway. Greg Calloway. Hello. Hey. Uh, here, let me take this thing off so it's not like that. Uh, my name is Greg Calloway. I'm actually a dentist from Lee Summit, Missouri. And my wife and I are wanting to get into investing in apartment complexes. 
So, uh, Kim, I guess we're not scared of it, <laughs> but uh, we're interested in the 500,000 to 1 million um, range. No less than eight units. Uh, we would like value add, but we're, we really don't want to do any major renovations uh, in the Kansas City area. And we're also still kind of building our dream team. So <clears throat> if you are if you have a deal uh, that's in that criteria, or if you think you would be an awesome member of our dream team, uh, then um, definitely email me. Uh, my email is reigregc at gmail.com. Thank you guys. All right. And that would be Greg. And then next up, I had something I was gonna share with you and now I've completely lost it, no idea. Oh, uh, apartments. If you're looking for apartments, I would also connect with Angel. She spoke earlier, but she uh, helps host a group on Wednesdays. I believe they're meeting on Wednesday evenings from time to time. Probably they were meeting every Wednesday afternoon um, and they talk about different topics in apartment investing. And they're actually looking to buy an apartment complex, I think, as a group, possibly. Um, and so you might check that out. And we will move on from the G's because I only have one G person. So we're gonna go next to the H's and that brings us to Harmony Brown. Harmony, are you Hi. out here? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> and uh, I can turn my video on. Um, I have my video off because I have a little one, a toddler here running around. So yeah, um, so yeah, first and foremost, I'm a full-time single mom uh, to a two-year-old. So that keeps oh, me pretty mommy. busy. Yep, that's, mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I am an interior designer and um, in my company is Harmony's Home Design. We do remodeling. Um, so I offer remodeling. Obviously, I do business while she's at daycare Monday through, well, a lot of Saturdays too, but Monday through Friday primarily, um, eight to five. And have a little one after those are outside of those hours, but I um I have three properties that I own, so I do a little bit of real estate investing. Um, I'm looking to move towards, I think, uh, short-term rentals, Airbnbs. That's kind of the goal, um, eventually, while also providing remodeling services. So, um, let's see. As far as what I'm looking for, what I need, um, I've been doing the real estate investing for a couple of years now. Not that I'm a professional, you know, there's a ton still more to learn, but um, the construction side of the business, you know, I've been working for someone for the last 10 years as a project manager in construction. I did get laid off due to the virus. So um, September, I officially launched my business and uh, me and my spouse are running it together. And so looking to work with more real estate investors, I prefer that. Um, I feel like they're easier to work with. It's easier to work in a home where someone isn't occupying it. I know that may not always be the case in, in real estate, but um, that is the preference to work with investors and unoccupied homes. So hopefully um, could be of service to some of you uh, eventually if you need to renovate, flip, uh, we do just about everything in-house except for electrical plumbing hvac that's about all we don't do so okay and also i do digital designs that's what my background is that's a design i finished up today so even if you just need some inspiration for a property that you purchase um i can provide that service as well to get ideas that would be great yeah okay well thank you very much um and we are going to move on to the Jays, and I believe my next person will be Jake Lipowski. Yep, you got, <clears throat> you got that right. Hi. Uh, hey everyone, uh, my name is Jake Lipowski. Uh, I just uh, recently relocated out to Kansas City um, right before the, the pandemic. So I've been here about, um, I moved from Buffalo, New York for my W-2 job. Uh, I'm in the insurance industry, um, but I have a full of units back in Buffalo um, small duplexes. So, uh, I have a team out there and more so looking to grow, uh, out in that area, but, um, you know, I'm just kind of learning the Kansas city market. Um, so if anyone is interested in looking at a state for anything and, um, they're looking at see what market they should be getting into, 
Uh, Buffalo is a great, uh, great market in my opinion. I'd be happy to talk to anyone and put people in contact with uh, people out there. Um, what I'm looking for, just, uh, you know, getting to learn the market and um, see if there's any opportunities out here. So I'll drop my contact. In there. We'll go on to my next person after Jake, which I believe is Jeff Cohen. Jeff, are you out there? Yes, I am. Hello. How are you doing, Kim? Good. How are you? I'm good. So my name is Jeff Cohen. I have been a real estate agent in the Kansas City Metro for the last four and a half years. And I say I specialize in helping people accomplish the real estate goals through buying and selling real estate directly. Um, in the last four and a half years, I've helped over 91 clients successfully close real estate transactions. And um, I also tend to work with a lot of home sellers, have an average of getting about 99.7% of list price in less than 29 days. Um, part of that, obviously, is the hot market we've been going through. But um, what I'm really looking for is just to meet new people and to also work with some investors and um, we would just really like to produce a positive return on investment for them like I have with others. So my phone number, which is the best way to contact me, is 816-284-6800. And I'll post my info in the chat. Perfect. Jeff Cohen. All right. And next up is um, Jennifer D. Well, do I have a last name? Jennifer Dold? Yes. All right, cool. Jennifer. Hi. Um, I'm Jennifer Dold with Rent Path, and we are best known for our websites like Apartment Guide and Rent.com. Uh, we have a number of products to help connect potential renters with potential residents. And we have um, also products that help with all phases of the renter's journey, including an exclusive partnership with Facebook and Instagram and virtual leasing centers. And at one point, uh, RentPath had a contract or a discount through National RIA of some sort. So I'll have to look that back up because I think it's still there. They just don't tell us about it very often. So, okay. uh, so Mary has a page with RentPath for all of our members, but I, it's just kind of been lost in the shuffle the last year or so. So I'll have to re refine that. So welcome. Thank you. Um, next up, we have Jenny Hyman with... CNB Custody. CNB Custody. That's one I've got to learn. I'm, I'm working <laughs> on it. Um, hello, my name is Jenny Hyman and I'm with CNB Custody. We are a division of Community National Bank in Seneca, Kansas. We're about two hours outside of Kansas City and we have locations in Baser and Tonganoxie, which is uh, fairly close to Kansas City. We have been in the IRA custody business for over 35 years, and we can hold real estate within an IRA or a Roth IRA. Um, we also handle SEP IRAs. So um, Evan, you mentioned earlier, you were looking for some help with that, so we can definitely help you out. Um, if you've ever thought about purchasing rental property, commercial building, farmland um, with IRA money, um, our team can sure help you do that. There are a lot of rules and regulations associ associated with doing so. Um, so we would advise you to seek um, help from your tax advisor or financial advisor as well before um, jumping in and purchasing something inside of an IRA. Um, we are one of the very few providers that are local to Kansas City that provide these types of services. Um, we do set up the IRAs and do most everything through email and fax. And, and through snail mail, um, but we'd be glad to meet you, you know, in Tong and Oxy or Baser if, if you need some, some personal assistance. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'll put my information in the chat with my email and my phone number. So if any of you have questions, um, drop your name in there. And I also have a real estate guide that I can either email to you or drop in the mail. It's a little booklet that kind of goes through the do's and don'ts of investing in real estate within an IRA. So. Be glad to help anyone that needs some assistance. Perfect. And you will also find Jenny's information also on the Mary Business page. All right. Next up, we have John Harding. John, are you out there? I am. Uh, my name is John Harding. I'm a new wholesaler. I've been studying real estate for about a year before deciding on wholesaling as 
kind of my entry point into the market. I was on the mastermind call on Friday and uh, said I'm looking for a mentor. And I was informed that I, I needed to provide something of value uh, back to that mentor. And so I'm not really sure what that would be other than time. Um, and uh, so if there are any experienced wholesalers who um, need some help with something that would also give me some practical experience, um, I would be more than happy to help. Um, so, yeah. All right. Well, cool. Ah, uh, and you're putting yours in the chat. And then I missed somebody because he is calling himself today the David Randolph. And so that put you in the T's instead of the D's. So we're going to circle back and go to David Randolph. That's actually my um, website. So I put, that was a neat trick to put your website in your name. That's kind of cool. All this Zoom etiquette, st Zoom etiquette stuff on it and stuff. But um, anyway, um, so hi, my name's David Randolph. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, uh, about two and a half hours, uh, you know, east of KC. I rehab five to 10 houses a year. Um, all my renovated houses have sold in seven days or less at list price or higher for now 10 years. Um, I make fifty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars profit on each house because I negotiate short sales with the bank. Now these are not houses on the MLS, but rather with the homeowner and the bank. So I'm very good at negotiating short sales with the bank. Actually, I've made so much money in real estate that I have nearly three million dollars in my retirement accounts. But since I'm only fifty-five. So I will lend the rehabber all the money to buy the house, all the money to fix it up, all the money for the points on the loan, and all the money for the monthly interest payments. So if the rehabber's got nothing in their checking account, then financially you're ready to rehab a house. Um, I will pay you $2,000 for your short sale lead uh, at closing, of course. Uh, you know, that house where you want to buy it, uh, but the seller owed too much money, bring it to me, okay? Short sales are going to be the thing of the future. I've been doing them 10 years. So bring me your lost leads where it's they owe too much money. I'll pay you $2,000 uh, for that lead so I can buy that house. Thank you. All right. He's practice. Thank you, David. Um, next up. Thank you. Um, be sure to watch your emails tomorrow because everybody that's on here will be getting an email from David, I'm sure. He is, he's an expert at these networking things. I've, I've met him on several networking, so he, he, he follows up very well. We're going to jump ahead to the Ks, and that brings us to Karen Rothermich, if I pronounced that one right. You did. You did very well. I always tell people it's spelled like mother, only start it with an R instead of an M, <laughs> and you can get there. And so you're get, and we can get a copy of all the chats, right? Is that yes. what you said? Okay, mm -hmm. I wanted, wanted to make sure of that because there's so much here I'm trying to keep writing. Um, I am an experienced real estate agent uh, with EXP Realty, and I also do recruiting of real estate agents. So if any of you have been thinking about, get, about getting your license, um, I can help you quite a bit. We have a great platform for investors because of our uh, passive income and our stock options, and we have several other things that are a lot different and unique to EXP. Um, also, I'm a house flipper uh, looking for homes, predominantly in the Northland. However, I have gone to KCK area and such, um, and I have flipped there, uh, but I do like it in the Northland. So, and I'm on a, on a lot of wholesalers lists, so you can add me if you're a wholesaler, you can add me to your email blasts and I'll come out and take a look as well been in real estate quite a while. I've also sold land and such. So give me a call and I'll put my information, of course, in the chat box for you. Perfect. Um, I, I seem to have skipped somebody because when I looked for the K's a minute ago, she wasn't, her name didn't come up, but now she's there. So we are going to jump backwards to Candy Meehan. Hey, Kim. Hi, everybody. Hi. So funny thing, Jake, I, uh, lived in Buffalo for a while and taught at Buff State for a while in my other life before I got into real estate. That was a couple, couple of days ago. Um, and I am a, a customer of Rent Pass. So just wanted to do a shout out to Jennifer on that. But 
Um, I own a property management company. We lease and manage single family homes primarily. We don't do any stacked multifamily. Um, anything from it, it, the rents on the lowest side of about $700. We don't have any upper range. Right now, we currently are up at 8000 a month on one of them. These are all not furnished, not short-term, well, long-term vacant houses. Um, we're really wanting to, can, I don't know why I say we, I have 10 employees. Um, we cover the whole Kansas City area up to close to Liberty, south to uh, Raymore, Gardner, um, east to Blue Springs, and then west to Bonner. We don't go to Lawrence. Um, but anyway, so single family, and we're really continuing to build and wanting to build the investors that we're working with that are looking for those kind of properties. So been around for 31 years and we're like, I'm the only owner of this company. 31 years I've been in business. I'm a, li I'm a licensed realtor, but we don't sell houses. We work with the XP very closely with our investors because one of the I don't mean to blast any other company because I have a lot of realtor referrals, but um, EXP really knows how to work with our investors and prioritize their deals. So I think there's a lot of investor agents there. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Candy. And thank you for helping us with all the advocacy throughout the year. I know you've been busy um, working oh. at the backside uh, meeting with uh, different people. So thank you very yes. much. And Stacy John Johnson Cosby is like the most amazing person in Kansas City advocating for landlords and people and helping get money to renters. And like she is off the charts. How that woman does everything she does, I have no idea. She has the Federal to to Reserve, every senator. I mean, she is amazing, amazing. So somebody, if you ever see her, talk to her, email her, whatever, just like hats off to that woman. Yes, definitely. So next up, Kevin Flynn. Kevin Finn. I can't read. My eyes are too small. It, Kevin it's Flynn. Flynn with an L. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Kevin Flynn. Um, so basically what I do, um, I do a lot of different things. I'll do some wholesaling. Um, I'm a real estate agent. Um, also have a, a portfolio of rental properties. Um, I work a lot of I work a lot of rental properties down the inner city. So, if anybody's looking for properties in the, uh, especially in the inner city, um, be glad to help you work on those. Um, should have another one up uh, listed here in the next week or two. We just gotta you know put a new door on it and then we'll, then we get it listed. So um, so that's a lot of what I do. Um, I come out to to Mari meetings all the time. I'm usually at the Windvestors meeting. So if anybody uh, you know needs any um, information about anything, feel free to reach out to me at um, on any of these Zoom calls, or uh, or just uh, you know give me a call, um, hit me up on Facebook, etc. Um, be glad to work with anybody um, all over town. I got a lot of experience. Uh, my real estate team of people, or my realtor team, I should say, we got a pretty good sized team with a lot of experience. We got people all over town, so we can work with you on any properties. Perfect. Yep. It's really weird. We can't actually have a phone call. We don't have to have a Zoom. We can have a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, did yeah. that feel the other day. I'm like, this is weird. I can't see you. <laughs> yeah, feel free to give me a call and be glad to work with anybody. And Or if anybody wants any advice on uh, where to buy good rental properties, um, I tend to uh, keep my nose in that business a lot. Perfect. And next up is the first Kim, and that would be Kim Donaway because she comes before me. So Kim Donaway, are you out there? Yeah, I'm out here. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I'm on a different system tonight. My computer guy set this up last week. So this is the first time testing it because I didn't, I was going through completing my high performance certification as a coach. So anyways, I've been a member of Mary since 2004, one of the old timers. I've got a couple of businesses. One is I have single family homes and Airbnbs. So that's been doing that for quite a few years. And I also have a pest control company. 
So I'm a real estate inspector. I've been at that for 36 years. So it gives me the luxury of being all over the metro. I have a big range. And then up until COVID, I was the photographer for Kim, for Mary. So like when people came in for the Christmas, yeah, I got them at the door. <laughs> it was great. Uh, right now I'm working on our homes. Basically, I'm not looking at new ones. I do look, but it more of a personal thing where I've been looking out west or out north, up north um, at more like larger lots of land because I also have a nonprofit that provides fresh produce to people. So I've been tossing some ideas around with some folks about buying a little bit of land and then expanding that platform. So I'm pretty busy and being uh, with all the businesses that I've done is I've been a consultant to many of my clients and I've had hundreds of clients over the last 36 years just being in business. So a lot of times when I'm at the meetings, I get people coming up. So anybody that ever has questions because I'm unattached about real estate, I can give you some information of what I know or if I know people who are in that niche, I can say, go check you know, with them because we're a pretty large group with Mary and it's an awesome group to get connected with so many people through this platform. So take advantage of it. And that's about it. And I'll put my information in chat. All right. Thank you, Kim. I'm going to take a quick look over here and see if we've raised where we're at on the money here. So let's take a Toys for Tots break. And remember that we're raising money for Toys for Tots. And it looks we're at $4,437.54. So if you haven't donated yet, please click over there before the end of the night. If you're on uh, watching this on Facebook, be sure to uh, do the same. And we will move on. I think our next up is in the L's. And I think we're moving on to Larry Moore. Larry Moore. Hello. How are you? Great. Um, how are you guys doing? Um, I am new. I'm actually just looking to uh, get into wholesaling. Um, I've actually been studying real estate in the Kansas City area for the past year, but I actually haven't done anything, to be honest. Um, I'm actually just looking to, you know, to find somebody who I can kind of, not, a, not necessarily a mentor, but maybe somebody who can um, show me, you know, how what's the first step in terms of um, wholesaling and how to get that process going. Also just how to, uh, you know, how to, you know, value properties in, in, in different areas of Kansas City. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, you know, this is my first Zoom meeting. So I just look, at, look to uh, taking any kind of information I can and, you know, get any information from anybody that I can. So that's pretty much it. Well, thanks, Larry. Um, you might, if you are a member, jump back and grab the replay of last Friday's uh, Roundtable Mastermind meeting. We talked a lot about where to get started, how to get started as a real as a wholesaler or a real estate investor. And we also talked a lot about uh, figuring out how to evaluate properties. Those were two of our big questions we talked about last Friday. So um, if you're a member that is Somewhere in Mary member. Okay. Com, you can log in and grab the, get into the library and grab the replay. And it seems I skipped myself. I don't know. Okay. I forgot the second Kim. So um, the second Kim is me, Kim Tucker. I am a um, real estate investor. I've been investing in Kansas City since 2000. Um, I've also been um, a realtor since 2002. Um, I, I'm a realtor primarily for myself anymore. I don't really, I, my, my claim to fame is I suck as a realtor for somebody else because I really don't like to do it. Um, so um, I do more, we buy houses for, that are off market and then we, we try to market them and sell them as is. That's primarily what we do. Um, we found if we put them on MLS um, that we make a lot more money. So I'm not the typical wholesaler. I buy the house with my money or private money, and then we relist it on MLS to get the maximum bang for our buck out of out of the uh, out of the house. 
Um, so that's kind of what I do. But if you would like to get on our buyers list, we either are wholesaling our own houses and we sometimes list, my son lists for other um, investors. Right now he's got a, a 50 unit apartment complex and a couple of other retail houses he's got listed. So you can register on our buyers list at kcinvest.com. Um, I think you can figure out kcinvest.com, but check that out. You can register there. And of course, I'm always saying, please join Mary and come to all of our events. So that's for me. Our next up, we're gonna move on to the M's and I believe Mark Barrett is next. So Mark Barrett would be our next person. Hi, I'm Mark Barrett and I do real estate investing. I do private lending and real estate brokerage. So on the investing side, I invest in single family homes in Kansas and Missouri. Um, also retail and office buildings. I do um, some JV flips with other investors and then um, getting into doing some owner financing investing as well. And um, private lending, I do that for other investors who are either doing BRRR or maybe a flip or also working with host sellers a little bit on that. Um, on the real estate brokerage side, I have a brokerage directions realty and we just focus on working with investors um, primarily to do our own deals, but we also work with other investors to help them list and sell their properties. Um, so I'm looking to network with um, other investors to acquire more properties and to do private lending, be a money partner on flips or to help investors with listing and selling properties of theirs. So you can get a hold of me through my website. It's uh, realsourcekc.com and I'll post that for you guys too. All right, thanks, Mark. Then we're gonna move on to the other Mark. Mark Yanda, are you out there? I am here. Although I'm about to lose this Zoom call because my uh, uh, iPad is uh, not, it's at 5%. So if I click off, I'll shoot back on on my iPhone. Um, first of all, I want to thank you guys for joining Mari. Um, if you guys are interested in uh, uh, getting involved, please do. Um, stay involved. You know, stay your course. You guys want... Uh, you guys want to uh, get on a great outcome. You want to join as many of these meetings as you can. And this is the kind of meeting you want to be on. So uh, I just want to thank you guys for being on here today. And I want to wish all my brothers and sisters uh, Merry Christmas. And I love you guys. Um, be part of the solution. That's what this is about. So anybody that knows us knows that we're part of the solution and we're here for you. So if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Um, I'm a cabinet distributor. Uh, we're a family owned company. We've been in business for a spell. Most of you guys that are flipping houses uh, use us and we appreciate your business. I want to thank you guys for that because that's really important to us. Um, being a family business, we're uh, involved with uh, uh, you guys. You know, it's what, what you guys want. It's not what we want. It's uh, taking the extra step, telling the truth, doing the right thing. Uh, being involved with the community. That's what this is about. So that's what we're about. So if you need kitchen cabinets or uh, you need, uh, you know, vanities for your uh, bathroom, let us know. We'll be able to help you out. Outside of that, uh, we also sell vinyl. We're manufacturers. So if you need really stupid math on vinyl flooring, SBC, Click, Goudin, any of that kind of stuff, you want to make sure you call us because we're going to save you lots of money. And that's what we're about. We're about saving people. So at any rate, again, if you guys uh, want to get involved, I would highly recommend that you continue to look at Zoom. You get involved with Mari if you want to get in multifamily. Uh, Angel's out there as well. And as somebody else said, you know, another group that we have is Winvestors. That's a really important group to get on. But the more people that you, that you surround yourself with, the more professional people that you surround yourself with, the more professional results you're going to get. So if you want what we have, get involved. Mark Yonda to my own enterprises. Hope this finds you well. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. We pay him at later for the commercials every time. All right. Um, next up is Paul Grehovac. I don't know how to say your last name. Let's try it again. Grehovac. That's Great. very good. That's more, that's more like how they say it in Europe. It's Paul okay. Grehovac here. Grehovac. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'll tell you what, since we're time limited, I've uh, prepared a script here. Build to rent. Build to rent investing is going strong around the country, and it's a smart way to generate rent. Section 8 is also a smart move. Those owners are sitting pretty in this recession, as they always do with government guaranteed rent. Building new means maintenance will be low, especially if you build for high durability and easy cleaning. You also want to build for high energy efficiency because you make money by paying tenant utilities, which allows you to charge the maximum guaranteed rent. Building lots are available from the land bank for $450 each. Home prices are rising in many of these neighborhoods. I know because my son and I each have a house in the one where we live. So your investment is strong both as an income-producing property and one with good resale value. I'm a corporate attorney and business development executive in the construction industry. We provide prefabricated building shells, and we are experts in durable and cleanable surfaces to avoid repairs and repaintings. We can help you find a builder, contract with them, and manage them. We have confirmed that local banks stand ready to support these projects at 20% down with both short and long-term financing. Thank you. I'm going to have to follow up with you because we've been having people ask those exact questions. So I will have to follow up with you. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to post some really good uh, Section 8 uh, videos that I found on YouTube. All right. Well, be It'll sure be to put your, uh, your link, uh, your contact information in the chat so we can find you after the meeting um, because I'm sure people have some questions on especially your, your, your prefab houses and, and, and building properties, because I've been having a lot of questions about that of late. So we are going to move on to our next letter in the alphabet, which brings us to Rachel Bailey. Rachel, I know you're out there. I am. Hi, everybody. Uh, Rachel Bailey. And I've been a part of MARI and many other networking groups for a couple of years. I also have taught a couple of classes to a couple hundred investors who want to learn about foreclosures. Um, let's see, this year we worked with um, nine different teams that have flipped houses. And I now have an inherited IRA that owns a storage facility. So the next few years, I'll learn about a lot of IRA investing. Um, learn by fire, I guess. And um, I work for auction.com. So um, I go to foreclosure sales in the state of Missouri. Um, right now, a lot of us are on hold before those sales come back. So I've been spending a lot of time learning about um, investing in property through creative finance. So I have uh, two properties where I was able to take over a mortgage and they were able to move on because um, one example, um, her mom had a stroke and they had to move um, before their next mortgage payment was due. And um, I was able to take over that mortgage, get a new family in place and uh, make a couple hundred dollars each month off that note and in income. So um, I'm looking to get like 10 of those. So if anybody is in the creative finance space, and um, doing more deals, I'd love to connect with you. Um, things that I'm looking for are leads from wholesalers or the leads that are the nicer houses where they really don't need work. They don't need flipping. They don't work for your rehabbers um, where I can um, buy the property or do subject to type purchase. Um, and take a nice house and get a new family in it for somebody to get out and get out fast. And I'm looking for how to do Google ads. If anybody has done those, I'm learning about marketing um, to a different segment than I've ever done before. And then I'm looking to um, spend more time um, connecting with investors that want to learn. In the past, when I have done group classes, um, it's been easy with Zoom and um, whole classes in person, but now I'm wanting to do more one-on-one -on -one and would love to exchange information for uh, things I've done and things that you need to learn. 
So that's all the things I'm working on, all kinds of things right now. All right, well, be sure to put your information in the chat. Um, uh, we have a person at Mary that comes around every once in a while. Um, some of you know her, Deborah Felderhoff. She uh, bought houses just like you're talking about, Rachel, and she made it to 100 doors in her first four years buying creatively. And she just did the same exact pitch at, at, at the networking meetings and everybody called her with the leads be, that they couldn't work. And she bought all the houses because we didn't think there was a deal there. <laughs> so we're going to move on. Our next person is Rebecca. And I don't have a last name for Rebecca. So uh, just Rebecca. Oh, uh, Rebecca, are you out there? Hello. Hello. Rebecca Flagg or Rebecca who? Well, now we know who it is. <laughs> okay, F, Rebecca Flagg. Okay, I am a, a buying horse side. I have about 20 renters. Uh, makes me crazy all the time. <laughs> I have a one um, one tenant hasn't paid uh, four months, so I'm thinking uh, everything or boss is uh, having problem. You know, nowadays if, if we try to evict, we cannot do that until end of this month. Some kind of holding and holding it makes me crazy. Anyhow, <clears throat> I'm buying. Uh, I'm trying to buy more uh, multi families. And I look at a several multifamily. However, whenever I offer it, it already gone. It was gone and gone and gone. I have money to buy. However, it's gone. I try to offer it, it's gone. So it's like, <laughs> couldn't catch it right away. <laughs> I like Rachel said, uh, like a taking over mortgage. And I haven't done that yet. I don't know how to do it. I don't know where I can find that, that information. Actually, I'm a, a nurse as well, so I'm doing working both. So this makes me crazy. Two things at a time, doing this and that. So, so much, I was so busy as a nurse, so I was kind of all behind the, this real estate. So I haven't attended many Zoom meetings so far, but now I, I try to some uh, meeting with the people. I'm looking for multifamily. Okay. Well, thank you, Rebecca. Be sure to put your contact information in the chat in case somebody has some multifamily. And next up, we have Riesel Robinson from Wichita. Riesel, are you out there? Sure am. Thanks, Kim. Uh, glad to be a part of Maria. I've been really enjoying this, the Zooms because I've been meaning to try and figure out how to get up there when you guys were live. But three That's hours up on a Tuesday night time. and three hours back is a long drive, so... Anyway, I am Riesel Robinson with Private Family Banking, where we help people and businesses, especially real estate investors, learn to think like a banker. Everyone should be in two businesses, what they do for a living and the banking business. If you're not handling the financing of your own properties um, with the money that you, the capital that you already have, you may be leaving interest and stuff on the table and also some tax advantages. So if um, I'll be leaving my information in the chat deal. And if anybody would like to more information, I'd be glad to send out an email to anybody that requests one. Okay. All right. Thank you, Riesel. And next up we have Renee Jones. Renee, are you out there? Renee yes, Jones. Yes, I am. Here I wow. go. Yep, I'm here. So, are we good? Yep, go ahead. All right, so I want to tell you, I've been working with my husband for the last 15 years, helping him run Patrick's Heating and Cooling Wholesale, Wholesale Supply Company. And in that, uh, we sell to property managers and people that sell flip houses. We're not your high-end guy. We're your kind of wholesale retail at 1625 West 31st Street in Kansas City. It's anyway, it's in the chat, but what we do is we kind of cater those people that are flipping houses. And if you, if you have your own maintenance person, fine. If you don't, we can kind of refer you to one. But 
I got into real estate investment because I wanted to kind of figure out what my customer experience is. So I bought my first uh, rental property about five years ago and I joined Mari and I joined Winvestors and I wanted to see what it was like on the other end. And then that property, I really enjoy it. And now I, I'm, I have some money I saved up and I want to kind of do some more real estate investment. And meanwhile, my daughter who works for our company is in marketing. She got her real estate and uh, she got her license. So it's kind of second generation now. And now, although we have a thriving business, we're, we're kind of looking to see on the other end of it. So if anybody needs HVAC parts, equipment, they have 12 year warranty. That's part of the bones of the house. We got you covered. Excellent. Thank you. Be sure to put your information in the chat. And next up, I have Rob Becker. Rob Becker. Hey, Kim. Hey, everybody. I apologize for not being on camera. My computer's giving me a little grief tonight. Um, I am uh, I'm a notes investor, primarily performing. Um, so I, I buy performing notes. If they're things I like, I broker them. If they're not, uh, for those of you who are Landlords who are looking to maybe uh, possibly look at seller financing, I'd love to talk to you just about some of the things you might want to consider in structuring your seller finance so that you have notes that you could sell off down the road and that would actually not take a huge discount. Um, so if that's of interest, if anybody's a tired landlord, um, look me up. Additionally, here of late, um, I've got some IRA money that I really want to lend to help out some landlords who are in need of um, a little bit of short-term cash to help kind of get through some COVID challenges. Um, and it's not going to be huge dollar amounts, but um, if anybody is out there with, you know, some good, good business practices, good properties, good tenants, but you need a, a little bit of cash to kind of get you by, um, reach out to me because I'm, I'm probably going to be looking to make two to three loans here um, relatively quickly. Um, they'd be about a, a year long and just kind of help get people through as best I can. The government's not really helping anybody out in this space and I'm just trying to do what I can um, out of funds that I've got available. So look me up if you guys um, are interested in any of that stuff. Perfect, excellent. Thank you and our next person, I gotta get everybody's names right here. Next up I believe is Ronald Ireland. Ron Ireland, are you out there? I'm here, thanks Kim. And uh, I'm uh, Ronald Ireland with SunMest Mortgage, and I can help you with uh, any of your financing needs, permanent financing. Uh, I'll work with a lot of investors. Uh, I also have access to for flip money for flippers and especially for those buy and holds out there. And I have a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, I'm a renovation specialist, so I have a lot of knowledge about I, and have renovated a lot of homes myself and bought them and sold them and flipped them and, and have, um, am held property, uh, just to have fun in real estate. And, but th my main reason tonight is, um, I am rolling out a website that is specifically for the wholesaler. And, uh, this is something that I've been working on for two years and really two years ago, seeing that there was just not enough property and the big thing in the future was going to be finding properties, I started befriending every wholesaler in town. So I've gone about befriending every wholesaler in town and have three to five wholesale deals a day coming at me. So they've overwhelmed me and I try and give these out every day to as many investors and buyers out there as I can. And uh, But decided a year ago that, hey, I need a website for these so I can, you know, post these on there and put these out to investors, uh, not only Kansas City, but all over the country. So we went about us uh, doing this and uh, now Corona gave us a little bit of a hiccup and we should have probably rolled this out about six months ago, but because of Corona, we got pushed back a little bit, but now we're actually uh, uh, this month starting to put this together to roll out. And then the first of the year, we'll do a hard rollout on this and start putting anybody. So right now, anybody that would like information on the site, how to, if you're a wholesaler, how to post on the site. If you're an investor, how to sign up to get, uh, to get leads for properties on the site. Uh, I will post uh, my email and then also uh, 
a website that you can go to and it's just a landing page for now to get it get a little bit more information as we put this all together i put a great crew together so people uh, that are around mary everybody from uh, rick davis to the Windberries to uh, aaron sherman is a uh, is a national photographer and does a lot of stuff for the home builders and uh, brian fishy who's around all the time we know him so we've all come together to uh to put this website together and we're going to be rolling that out so anybody interested in a wholesale website uh, i'll put my information in there and reach out to me uh, ron right. Ireland. Well, we look forward to seeing that ron next up we have steve brookerson steve are you out there i probably butchered the name steve brookerson I'm not getting Steve. He must have lost us. Nope. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. I probably Here we go. lost 30 Technical seconds. Technical difficulties. Yeah. Go for it. So I'm very new to this world. Um, I'm uh, an attorney for the government. My partner is also an attorney for Wyandotte County. And we went to law school together and decided that this is going to be our part-time after-hours adventure. We both love it. and. Uh, both come from it, like a background of real estate in our families. And so kind of a very natural fit. Um, this is my second or third Mari meeting. And I've met a lot of wonderful people that I think I'll hopefully have further interactions with as I jump into this some more. I don't particularly have anything that I'm trying to impress on everybody this evening, but I just look forward to getting to know everybody some more. So Thank you, everybody, and happy holidays. Thank you for joining us. Happy holidays. All right, Susan, we finally made it to you. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Hi, Kim. Thanks. Hey, everybody. So I'm Susan Aubin. I'm with Merchants Mortgage. I live here in the KC metro area now, and I have a couple of rentals here. I am also a Mary member and vendor, and I do have a lot of references. We offer short-term loans for real estate investors. We lend up to 90% of both the purchase price and the rehab. We're generally 10% and a couple of points. And I will go ahead and put my information in the chat. Happy holidays, everybody. All right. She's the crazy person that moved here from Colorado. Right. I don't know. All right, after Susan, we have another Susan. I have Susan Chagaldian, if I pronounced that right. I probably didn't, but Susan with the C. It was perfect, actually. All right, cool. I was taking Hi, staff. everyone. I'm uh, Susan Chagaldian. I have been um, a mortgage lender for like 25 plus years. I am in uh, Topeka, Kansas right now because my daughter and her family moved here years ago. So I no longer have anyone in. I'm from California. I still work in California. I'm licensed in California, but I've been here a year now. And, uh, and uh, I've bought and sold property um, I'm in California and outside California. I've done very light, just basic cosmetic. Uh, fixers. Right now, I've, I've sold everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I will start buying again. And uh, uh, when I grow up, I really want to be a successful wholesaler. So I need to learn. And I'm so glad that I've joined this wonderful group. There's so much I can learn. Um, what I'm good at really is uh, working with people. I can find solutions. And that's what I do. I work with self-employed people, primarily investors, and there's always a solution. You just have to put a little bit of effort. And so in that sense, I can offer, I can hopefully be a value, but yeah, wholesaling will be my next um, thing to do. And I'll put my information on the chat. Do I still have another two hours or no? Yeah, yeah, another two hours, yeah, no. We, you, had, you had six seconds. Ah. 
But we will jump backwards, actually. I think I missed someone. I believe I missed Ryan Guffey. I don't have him written down. And Ryan, I'm sorry, I missed you. So I will jump back to you. Ryan Guffey. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Ryan Guffey. I'm new to the meeting. Um, it's first time here. I'm an electrician around the Kansas City area. Uh, just trying to start getting in, into the real estate. Uh, started learning a couple months ago. Uh, really just trying to learn as much as possible. Just kind of want to check out the meeting and All right. see what that was about. Well, that's we're glad you joined us. Yeah, pretty let's say pretty new. Just trying to see what everything's about and learn as much as I can, really. All right. And I'm going through and making sure, seeing who else I missed. Oh. So far, I think I've gotten everybody. I could be wrong. Ryan, I missed you. Oh, we have a new person that's joined us since would be Selena Washington. Selena, are you out there? I'm here. Hi, everyone. My name is Selena Washington. I'm the owner and operator of Golden Mobile Homes. I help individuals and families get into great affordable mobile homes, and I also help mobile home owners sell their mobile homes. So if anyone comes across anyone wanting to sell or buy a mobile home, call me. My name is Selena Washington. My number is 816-974-3393, and I will put the information in the chat. All right. So our, you're our mobile home person. Yes. All right. Cool. Thank you very much. You're and welcome. next up, we're going to move on to the T's. And I have a T-N, T-I-E-N, T-N. Hello, everyone. My name is T-N, and um, I'm new to the real estate investing as well as this meeting. Um, so I'm here to soak up the knowledge that everyone has to, to provide as much as I can. And um, the direction that I want to head towards is to buy and hold rental properties, including single family and multi-units. And I'm targeting properties that need significant work and under market value. And I'm looking to buy those properties, fix them up and rent them out when I'm finished. And in order to do that, I would need to know contractors, lenders and property managers so I would appreciate any referrals that you guys provide. And I'm also interested in partnering with anyone who wants to work on deals together. And you know, for anyone who wants to partner, I will work very hard to bring you deals and operate them. Yeah, um, that's all I have and thank you for, for having me here. All right, thank you for joining us and be sure to put your information in the chat. And I believe that brings us to Vikas and Anu. I don't know who wants to speak or if you're both going to take a turn. I'll be the one speaking. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Anu and that's my husband Vikas. We've been in uh, real estate for about 20 years. Uh, mostly do fix and flips, but I have a portfolio of rentals. And now looking to get into note buying. Uh, we've done private money lending before and trying to get back into doing some of that. Our biggest need is more properties to fix and flip. We've been able to sell all our inventory this year, first day, multiple offers, over list price. Um, we mostly get all our properties at the foreclosure auction, but like Rachel said, there's no more auctions, so no more properties for us for the last three months. But um, if anybody has anything to offer or selling notes which are non-performing or performing, we would be interested in them. All right, so you're looking for fix and flips and notes. Yes. All right. Uh, okay, that brings us to, I believe, Jonas Tekesti. Yep, that's correct. All right, keep trying, I'm doing good. All right. Hi guys, thanks for having me. This is my uh, first time here. I am a complete, newbie investor um, and I am in a different state. I'm actually in Chicago, so I would like to be an out-of-state investor. 
for my job, I'm a travel physical therapist. So I constantly move from one place to the next. So that's why I want to um, invest in, in an, a different state. And for physical therapy school, I went to Southwest Baptist, Southwest Baptist University, which is in Southwest Missouri. Um, I'm currently looking for off-market multifamily properties. Um, I've, I've already been pre-approved for a loan um, and I'm willing to do some light rehab. Um, and I'm pretty motivated. I hopefully would like to buy at least one to two properties um, per year. Um, and you can reach out to me through email just at Jonas Dequeste, um, at Jonas Dequeste 24 at gmail.com and I'll post that in the chat. And things I can offer, I'm not really sure. Um, I'm a physical therapist. I could give some exercise tips. That's a joke. Um, but um, potentially in the future, um, I would like to partner with somebody where I could fund the deal. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, thank you. Now we're gonna go back and see if there's anybody I missed. I think I've made it all the way through the alphabet. So if I missed you, jump out there and just say, hey, this is me and you missed me. I think I got everybody, cool. So then I wanted to see if we had any questions because we had a lot of interesting stuff that came along and I wanted to go back um, and ask Paul a question perhaps if Paul would be available to ask a question. Um, one of the sure. questions we had on building new and building to rent was how do you build a house? Let me turn that off. How do you build a house cost effectively and then be able to rent it and make money? And it sounds like you're coming in with a prefab house. So what can we expect on something like that? Or, or just a brief five minute idea there? Well, I haven't run all the numbers. I have put some numbers together, but I, I didn't assemble them for, for this purpose. I didn't know I'd I'd have the interest. Uh, you probably, uh, I could give you some numbers from which you can calculate. Uh, we anticipate you can put one of these up for uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $120 per square foot. And uh, you got to keep in mind that on Section 8, to get the maximum rent on a four bedroom, it's $14.90 a month is the maximum rent. And to get that, you pay tenant utilities. But the way that's computed is based on inefficient housing stock. And uh, these, these buildings use half or less the energy of a regular building. So um, whether the numbers work well, you know, you got to factor in, you know, a lot less maintenance than going out there and, and buying a whole house and trying to find people to work on it. So you guys are a lot smarter than I am. I'd be glad to network with you, but... I don't, I don't have a silver bullet, but I, I think it might be there. I encourage you to look into it. I'll be glad to help you with it. Well, that, that's a question. I, I know a lot of people are struggling finding rentals. Inventory is tight because there's not a lot of inventory. So we need to build more houses. And I've had a lot of people asking about building houses. I know a few of people are going the old fashioned way, Cora Foundation and doing a stick built house. Um, but if you could build it faster and cheaper, then you have a, a better... Uh, uh, cash flow if you if you can build it cheaper so that would yeah let me let me make another couple of quick con comments I mean with lots at four hundred and fifty dollars in a neighborhood where when I came in here ten years ago there were houses in Johnson County that would go for two hundred grand or so maybe one fifty were going for twenty five thousand dollars and now there's one here going for a rehab going for a quarter million so. I think something's going on here. It's kind of a perfect storm of different factors that you guys ought to look at. Okay. Well, that was one of my questions, but did anybody else have something that struck out at you that you had a question and you wanted to circle back and ask a question? So normally after we do our speed networking, then we can break up into little groups and go find each other and ask questions, but we're just going to do that virtually here. So. I don't know if anybody had some interesting, something that struck their, their question and, and they wanted to ask a question or they just had a question period that they wanted answered. I would, we would do our best to answer it in the next 20 minutes or so. Okay, Rebecca, you have a question. 
Yes. Uh, uh, anybody um, know about status of eviction nowadays? What do we still need to wait until uh, end of this month? Yeah. The can I jump in? Yes. No, go for it. Uh, the eviction moratorium has been extended to January 31st. January 31st? Yes, both the eviction and the foreclosure moratorium. Oh, no. And that's the uh, FHA eviction? And yes. Or is that the, uh, the CDC's eviction? Oh, I have a link to it and I can send it to you, Kim, and okay. maybe you can forward it or post it. Okay. Well, I will ask everybody that is a landlord, if you would take a moment and go to, I'll, I'll grab the link here, um, but National RIA, um, they are talking with stakeholders in Washington, D.C. Um, they are fully expecting that the CDC's moratorium will be extended. How long, I'm not sure, but they're trying to get data to share with the elected officials in Washington, D.C., that if they are going to extend the moratoriums, that they make sure that the landlord gets paid. And they have a survey. So I am going to post a link to that survey here in the chat. If everyone that owns rental property would take a minute and take that survey, um, that data is going to be going to elected officials in Washington, D.C. that hopefully will realize that making the landlords pay for everything is not the way to go. Um, so are hoping. they gonna, if the government, are they gonna uh, pay for the landlord for not having any money? Well, what's going on? We are asking, and we are, we've been asking since this started that if they're going to have an eviction moratorium, um, that they find a way to also um, make sure that if the, if, that we don't need an eviction moratorium, that they pay the landlords so that the landlords are getting their rent. Um, there is some money out there. I think we've ran through most of it, but there is a little bit of CARES Act money here and there. So I would say if you have tenants that haven't paid, reach out to a 211kc.org. Um, there may be funds that can help them pay rent or help them pay utilities or put groceries on their table or even help you pay mortgages. I think we're about out of CARES Act money, but I'm sure we're going to have another round coming through. But always check with 211. They have the most up-to-date list of, of resources that still have money. Okay. That's helpful to anybody. Thank you for the information. I'm gonna post that there, but that is the survey and the uh, 211, I can't type right today, kc.org. All right. Anybody else had just, any questions? Can I just jump in, Kim, and say sure. that st I don't know if Stacy's still looking for him, but if any of you have a real life story, like a, a housing provider that has a renter, like as a property manager, it would be my client who's been affected because a renter isn't paying rent. Um, Regardless of income status of the renter or the rent amount, or regardless of, no, that's not a name, regardless of, of that. Um, but Stacy was looking for actual stories, like real life stories of people where the, so the small investors, you know, like three to 10 property or even one property where the renter isn't paying rent and now the it compromises the owner of the property, either on their own personal residence or the investment property or whatever. If you have those specific stories, if you get them to Kim or to me, we get them to Stacy. And again, Stacy has the ear of many, many elected officials. And I think if we can give them actual stories of real life situations, how that will help with the impact of tying any CARES Act eviction moratorium to money to the housing provider. Yeah, so they're finally figuring that out, that they need to pay the landlord and, and, and not the tenant. Yes, yes. I would like to chime in, but it's, it's kind of like a family situation for me. I'm renting to my daughter and they can't afford to pay for but I, 
I would like, how does that work out? Well, I mean, if, if there are, well, I, I, there was funds a week ago in Jackson and Johnson, and I know there, that, that they were promoting. I know there's other funds out there that they weren't promoting, but I'm sure they're still there. So if you have a need and it's because of COVID, there are, there, there have been programs out there. They might've been, they might be out of money by now, but what we found was they had all this CARES Act money that came out last March and nobody spent it. And then they're like last, you know, mid November going, okay, we've got so many days to come up with a program and get it dis dispersed. So they started marketing it like a week ago and most of it's gone now, or at least spoken for, but I would still reach out to 211 uh, kc.org. If you go through the website, they ask for a zip code and then you tell them what your need is and they do their best to match you to a resource that has something. Some of it's for rental, some of it's for mortgage, some of it's for utilities. And then they so also thank you. food. So thank you. It's 211. I need to reach out to. Yes. 211kc.org or just 211. You can dial thank it. You. Thank you. Thumbs up. Oh, Kim, I did uh, put that uh, you know, link on the chat for the moratorium extension, the okay, FHA I see moratorium. That. I will, I will uh, follow up with that and read that as well. Make sure that goes in the Mary newsletter. Okay. All right. Hey, Kim. Kim, it's David. Uh, yes, go ahead. I want to point out to all the investors out there, you know, we keep talking about the tsunami for foreclosures coming and stuff like that. The statistics are in the month of November, 200,000 people uh, came off of the CARES Act forbearance, okay? In the month of December, there are 1 million homeowners who will be kicked off of the CARES Act forbearance. It does not last forever, okay? And November, 200,000 people were kicked off. And in December, 1 million will be kicked off. So be watching out for that foreclosure process to, you know, ramp up. In the month of October, foreclosures did increase 20%, okay? Small numbers, okay? Small numbers, but it was still, October was an increase in foreclosures. Um, so be watching for that, guys, moratorium or not. You're right. I, they are also, I think they might extend, I, I, somewhere I read there, they're trying to figure out how to extend the um, um, the forbearance plans to give them a couple more months as well. But whether that will happen or not, we don't know. Well, well, Kim, but see, people don't understand. That's for new people coming on. There's certain criteria for them to remain on it. They've been in since March. So not everybody stays on there. That's to allow new people to come in yeah, to okay. the forbearance plan. So just watch for an increase in foreclosures, guys or more people wanting to sell so that they don't have the foreclosure. Well, you know, I said this on the mastermind and I'll tell it to people here. You guys need to understand a short sale is defined as when the homeowner misses one payment. You don't need a foreclosure date to do a short sale, uh, but nobody really realizes that, but I just told you, so now you know. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> um, I have a quick question if I can. Sure. Um, you know, on, on that same related subject, I mean, uh, you know, personally, when, I, when I'm out, uh, you know, talking to people, my chief aim, of course, is to help them solve their problem. And um, I've met a number of people that, you know, in, in such situations, they have some solutions for homeowners and such, where maybe the best way isn't for us to necessarily buy the house. Um, just in the interest of sharing with the group, what are, you know, who, who might, who would be the best person to speak up on this is, you uh, you know, what may be some other options that we could offer a homeowner short of needing to buy their house? You know, because if, if somebody has options other than selling it to, say, one of us, for example, you know, we should certainly be able to present them with that um, uh, with that opportunity or at least choice to make uh, before giving up on their own home ownership and such. Well, I have I have an article I was revamping for my website. Um, one option is that they could right now, because of the shortage of houses, they could very, not very easily, but they may be able to list their house and sell it and buy something lesser or go rent just to keep the foreclosure off of their, off of their books. Or 
they might list it and sell it and find that they can't quite sell it, but it's a little short. Well, that would be a good referral to somebody that does short sales like David. Um, he could either help do a short sale to buy it or anybody out there that does short sales, or you could, you could negotiate that if you learned it, or um, there are companies out there that will just help the homeowner sell their house or agents that do that, that specialize in short sales so they could sell it. They might be able to refinance it. A lot of people haven't thought about that. If they haven't missed a payment and they're in forbearance, they might be able to refinance it. Um, I was actually talking to Kevin Shortell. They also are, uh, there were some programs that they rolled out in 2008 that were in-house refinance plans within the, within the, you know, the government paid for it, but they would basically refinance the mortgage they have where they're at. Basically, you just filled out a form and said, please refinance me. And they did it. There was no, you know, no, a lot of uh, back end work. And um, there, the government is talking about, Kevin said they were talking about revamping those programs. So they're not there yet, but I understand that there's some programs from 2009 to 10 that they're trying to roll out again to help people refinance their houses um, so that they can stay in them. And a lot of those programs not only help to refinance, but they might catch up on the back payments or, or help you get your loans modified. Um, hey, Kim. Uh-huh. Go ahead, hey, David. I'm sure you have input too. Yeah, that, no, that's an, uh, exactly an idea. And, and uh, Damon's got the right idea. You have to have a heart for the people to help them out first. The short sale is just the, the last option that they have where you buy the home. So Kim, and what you said, the way they do that for the refinancing is a little bit tricky and it is dangerous because the interest rates are so low today, that would greatly help that family out. But the CARES Act, when that came about, when you go into the forbearance program, it forbids you from refinancing because uh, lenders will not refinance uh, if you are in a forbearance mode of, of any kind, not related to CARES Act or not, it doesn't matter, just any day of the week. If you're in a forbearance plan, you can't refinance, which is why Wells Fargo got sued because they put all these people in it without their uh, direction. So the trick here, uh, Damon, would be is if their credit score is still good enough, okay, which it should be because the forbearance does not hit their credit. If they can uh, write a, a letter, paragraph to the bank to say, remove me from the forbearance plan. And then very quickly at that point in time, go and apply for refinancing at these super duper low interest rates. Now they've got financially a better situation in their life uh, where that crazy payment, you know, is cut in half or well, not half, but do the calculations, but you have to come out of forbearance and then uh, refinance immediately. That's how you do that, Kim. Okay. Interesting uh, ways to do things. And then you could also uh, something like the creative financing, like Rachel was talking about, they can't afford it, but you might be able to buy it, take over their payments and then rent it out or lease option it. Or, you know, I, the last subject to I did, we actually rehabbed it and sold it, but we, we took over payments for five months that gave us time to rehab it and find a new buyer and then resell it. Um, but a lot of these programs that you're looking at, especially the short sales, there's usually a clause when you deal with the lender that says if, you, if you're going to buy it, you can't sell it back or lease it back to the previous homeowner. They don't like the previous owner staying in the house. I know people that do that and they have had great success, but then I have other people that like don't do that. It's horrible. Bad things happen. And I've done it both ways and they both worked for me. So... Yeah, well, it's called fraud if you sell it back to them. <laughs> right. I, I rented mine back. Uh, I, I bought a house in, for, through a short sale and rented it back to the person. I rented it to her for five years. And I got to the point, then we hit 2008 and 9, and I didn't want the house anymore. And she couldn't pay me rent anymore. So I just gave her her house back. So I didn't sell it back to her. I gave it to her. And I was perfectly happy. I'd made my money off that deal. I didn't want it anymore. <laughs> A quick question on the subject two stuff that you guys just mentioned. Uh, do you guys like, so when you're doing a deal, do you guys talk to the banks first about being okay with that? And then are they usually okay with that kind of thing? I mean, I know the interest rates are low now, so it's probably, they're getting probably a higher interest rate from the previous loan anyway. It you depends talk? on the bank because the house I bought subject to the borrower's bank told him 
to sell his house subject to, only they wanted him to sell it to a different investor that the banker knew, um, but we offered more money. So he ended up selling to us, but most banks don't really want to hear about it. They don't want to know about it. My particular deal, the bank did. So it's going to be, depend on the bank. You, you never know. In my, my first one, my... go ahead, Rachel. In my first one, my borrower was a couple months behind and I had a loan authorization. So I was allowed to talk to the bank on behalf of that borrower. And I asked him, I said, what are you going to do? Are you not even accepting monthly payments? They're a couple thousand dollars behind. They said, well, we'll just wait till the eviction moratorium is gone and we'll start a foreclosure process next year sometime. And I said, will you accept any payment? And they said, no, we need all of the delinquent amount before we'd accept any payment. And so they were just planning on waiting and waiting. And then we're going to kick them out, even though they had lived in the house for 19 years and had been paying for 18 of those years. So the bank had no personal interest in helping them out. And I said, now I'm looking at helping them financially and I'd like to start making payments. And they said, great, here's the information to send us your payment. So they were very happy to take money from me. Didn't really matter to them who it was, but that was my situation. But I was just shocked. The bank had no interest in helping the homeowner. So Kim, another just quick point that comes to mind for me here is it's probably pretty wise for all of us to become well-versed in programs like you're talking about with 211, because, you know, you've got, we're all real estate finance types. We're, we're looking at it from the real estate finance um, perspective of things, but anything you can bring to bear to help somebody, you know, from food assistance to, you know, any of that stuff. So just become familiar with what's out there um, because any of that you can bring to a conversation with somebody, you know, if you ultimately get to buy that house at, at, you know, and it helps you out great and it helps them out great. But if you are looking to try and just help them out, just, you know, study up a little bit on, on things that, that are helpful right now. Um, I wasn't aware of that two and one. And I think that is the kind of thing that, that's really useful to, for all of us to have in our, you know, in our arsenal. And, and I would say if you have have rentals or or you have um, people that you sell or finance, so you have notes. Um, so either you got renters or you've got tenant buyers. Keeping that communication going back to them, letting them know that there are options out there. Because um, unfortunately, there's a lot of programs out there, and they have the money, but nobody knows how to get that information out to the general public. And that is not something that's on the news on a regular basis. Um, so if we, it, it's up to us as, as people in the industry to, to, to seek out that information then, and then impart it to our, our tenants and our tenant buyers on our friends and family so that we can make sure that they, uh, you know, we can help them out where they, where, and it may not be with rent. It might be with food. It might be with toys for tots. It might be with coats and blankets. And by the way, if you have any extra lightly used coats, um, blue rain, um, I, I don't remember who it is. Blue Rain is collecting coats. So if it's on the Mary's Facebook group. So if you go to um, Facebook and look for Kansas City Real Estate Investors by Mary, or the easy way to find it is mary.org slash Facebook. You can find our group there. There's a lot, 11,000 people on there, but Blue Rain uh, is, I believe they're HVAC. They are collecting coats and they have pickup locations all over the city and they're doing a coat drive. I understand we're short of Kim, coats. it's Blue Rain Roofing. Yeah, it's uh, Roofing. All right, thank you. Yes. I, can't, I can't search on Facebook and talk on Zoom at the same time. No, it's Blue Rain. And uh, David oh, Lopez is the person who's collecting it. He's the owner. Yes, so if you're on our Facebook group, there's they have a, a, a graphic that lists all the, the drop-off locations. So if you, you have coats, um, adults or children that you're no longer using, be sure to get them to one of the drop-off points or even you know Goodwill or anybody out there that can put it to use. All right, so do we have any other questions or comments or thoughts? I have a question. Has anyone heard the people who are in forbearance, uh, has anyone heard the major lenders are going to do loan modifications at the end of the forbearance so that they don't have to go refinance or sell or all that? Uh, no, Bonita, what the banks are doing, 
one third, one third of the banks are allowing the sellers to put the arrearage, the amounts they haven't paid for the past nine months, which could be 10 grand. They're, one third of the banks are allowing them to put that on the end of the loan, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so their monthly payment doesn't actually change. But that's actually not a good thing because think about it. Now what you owe is more than maybe what the house might be worth or it's more than what you owed before. You go now to refinance and you have to pay off more in the refinancing. So it doesn't really help people a lot that kind of freezes and sticks them and forces them to stay in their high interest rate loan that they have. Um, you can't tell my jack what they have. Well, yeah, well, no, it doesn't. It, you could have, uh, you could have uh, eighty percent equity. It's not relevant. The bank is going by a debt to income ratio. What's your salary uh, and you know monthly salary versus what your uh, payment's going to be? And if you can't get the, uh, if the amount you're borrowing now is larger, your monthly payment is going to go up, and you won't meet the thirty-four percent debt to income ratio, no matter what equity you have. Uh, so it's not a pretty situation. That's the best they do. The oh, worst they is they'll have to make qualify you pay for immediately. That. They'll have to qualify for that to get yeah, the to add it to the end of their mortgage. The right. Yeah, that's that's the problem. You have to qualify to be able to refinance with somebody else mm -hmm. um, on it. Um, but it's it's tough for people out there. The banks are not nice. They never were. No. It's where the government with those programs that Kim was talking about that were offered back in 08, 09, 10, and the banks were being really resistant to putting them out there and getting the information. So the government just started slamming the banks about not offering the programs because I took advantage of it. I went and refied four properties, dropped the interest rates on those puppies down like 3% and have my, the mortgages on those rentals. It's an awesome program. And they had restrictions around it, but it, it worked. And then when they were going through with like the notes you know, with Kevin Shortle, they're, they're, cause I'm with the note school, 25 of the states, you had the hardest hit funds that were offered in several states. So if you knew which states were being offered, you know, those programs, you would help that person in that home to file for that. And then the investor actually would end up getting the check for what was owed because it paid it off. It was, a, if, you the, if you own the note. Yeah. It was hard to sit funds. I mean, it, it was a great program, but, and yeah. if you didn't take it on, you could still help the person to get in. And so they could stay in their home because ultimately what I don't want to see happening in this country is millions and th or even thousands and thousands of people hitting the street or hitting the social service buildings because who's going to ultimately pay? People like all of us who work that throw the taxes to them. So it's like there's got to be a lot of doable things, a lot of things happening because sometimes it gets a little one sided. Yet when I'm looking at things and I'm seeing people struggle, because I see it because I'm out there and I'm in every industry and I'm listening to them all. There are people that are struggling and they don't even know which direction to go because they're not even getting the information. Yeah, sadly, they don't. Uh, that, that's why we've been doing a lot of the things that we've been doing is because the information is there, but they don't have access to it. Um, and I don't know why. Of course, the charities that are out there are not, or, and even the government programs, they're just there. They're, they just assume people will find them. They don't think they need to market that. So there's no marketing budget with any of these programs anymore. So they needs to be. In Lawrence at the Just Foods Food Bank, they had a, the agency has had a huge yellow card by the, where people picked up their food, you know, telling about the CARES Act and the housing. And, but I learned the other day, something that I thought was, interesting. Um, somebody who used to be a director of a mental health organization was telling me the funding for some of the agencies is really screwy. And she said the Burton Ash Community Mental Health Center, for example, um, a certain program for housing there gets funding based on how many 
families or people they house in a year. But if they put somebody in a house, if they help match up with a landlord and then the person gets evicted several months later or violates the lease or whatever and gets back on the streets and then gets rehoused, that counts as a second housing number for their funding. In other words, they don't count it as the same family. It looks like they're housing that many more people and their funding is that much higher so that there's not incentive to make sure it's a good placement because if it's a bad placement, they can make more, get more can funding. Burn money, uh, in other words. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank everybody for their input. It looks like we're hitting eight o'clock and I kind of wanted to, to cut us off at eight o'clock. Um, just because I like to end a little bit earlier uh, during the holidays, there's a lot more holiday events going on. Um, we will uh, reconvene Friday morning at 845. If you want to further discuss real estate, bring questions, um, prepared with questions, and we do a more of a round table on Friday. So you're welcome to join us. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us and for being with us all year. I see a lot of faces that have been here all year. I look forward to seeing the new faces in the next year. And um, if you haven't yet donated to Toys for Tots, take a minute and jump over to mary.org slash toys and uh, give those guys uh, $5, $10, $50, up to $300, and you can deduct it on your taxes. So um, Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy Hanukkah and all of the other holidays I'm missing that we have in December. And a happy new year. Um, I will see a few of you the next two Fridays, and then we're going to take a break for two weeks and start again in January. I will go ahead and stop recording. Oh, it didn't record. Lovely. Luckily, it live streamed. Oh, let's save the chat. If you want to save your chat, people, just Make sure that you save the chat if you would like to have a copy of it. I saved it and will email it out to everybody who attended. And I'm going to have to grab the replay off of Facebook. Lovely. All right. Well, see you, everybody. And uh, see you either Friday or in the new year.